Welcome to part two of fixing my grandfather's 66 year old workbench. Today we're going to focus on stability and making sure it is absolutely rock solid to work on. So let's get to that right now. This is the second part of a two-part series on me fixing up my Grandpa Bill's workbench. If you're interested in seeing part one, I'll link it up here somewhere. And if you're not, don't worry because we're gonna get into stabilizing the table right now. Now the problem with my workshop being so tiny is that it's really hard for me to show you the whole table so I can show you the whole problem. So instead of that, I shrunk the table down to a not at all to scale size model. Meet mini bench. Now obviously this does not in any way represent how my grandfather built the bench, but it does allow me to illustrate very clearly the issues with it. If you just take a look at these four attachment points where the legs meet the tabletop and the shelf underneath. Now ideally, these four points should make a rectangle with four 90 degree angles, but when it wobbles, that doesn't happen. If we exaggerate that wobble, we see that the rectangle actually becomes a parallelogram. Now I am so sorry to bring math into this. Whoa, it's, uh, it's really not that bad. I, I just mean to say that whenever a rectangle becomes a parallelogram, the only thing that's happening is that the two opposite sides are either getting closer together or farther apart. And that we can easily fix with... The letter of the bell X. That is right, the letter X can help us with this project. Sort of. Here, check it out. If we build what I'm gonna call an X bracket across the back side of the workbench, it's gonna cancel out those forces we talked about that are trying to pull outwards or push inwards. If we repeat this process on both sides, that's gonna make this workbench super solid. Of course, I'll leave the shelf open and accessible from the front, but that's the plan, so let's get to it. Take your two x four and clamp it in place to the workbench. Then on both the top and bottom, take your Sharpie marker and mark where the leg of the workbench meets your two x four. These marks will show you where to cut so that it fits the way you want it. Then grab two screws and tack it back in place for now. Grab two cutoffs of 2x4s or whatever you have laying around and put them in the opposite spaces, top and bottom, to work just as a bracket spacer for now. You'll see, it makes way more sense when you look at it. What we'll have is the X bracket part A in the center and then spacer 1 and spacer 2 on either side. What these spacers do for us is make it way easier when we go to make part B of the bracket. All you have to do is clamp it up and this allows us the proper spacing to make all of the marks we need to. Other than repeating the process for the length marks we made on the first piece, we also mark out where the boards cross on each beam. And then take everything off that we just did. Trust me, it'll all make sense soon. Earlier, when we were looking at mini bench, we quickly realized that this point where the two by fours cross would give us the biggest issue because two by fours don't bend like thin pieces of wood do. So the plan is to notch out the two by fours so that they fit together, offering us even more stability. Where the wood crossed on the side of the boards that were marked, we're going to cut halfway down into each along those lines we made. I simply marked a line on the side of the board halfway down so I know where to stop cutting. Then I chiseled those sections out to that same depth, making sure to carefully clean out the notches so that when put together, we had a nice snug fit. So now that we have both of the middles of the pieces chiseled out, when we put them together, they should fit nice and tight. Let's take a look. Awesome. Now we'll install what we made where it'll live for hopefully the next 66 years. And then you just rinse and repeat on the other side. I'm not going to show you that because, well, you've already seen it. And you can see that I've already done the back side, which served as a great trial run. While this method of stabilization is a little bit labor intensive with all the cutting out of the notches and the chiseling, it's so worth it. I can't even say enough about it. Do you remember what this table was like before? It was just wobbling all over the place and now it is super stable. I can't even tell you. I can't make it wobble if I try. Do or do not. There is no try. Anyway, I'm excited to use the table for the next 66 years, and I'm pretty damn sure that Grandpa would have been really proud. Now that the workbench is super solid and ready to go, it's time for me to get on to some more projects. After I put my workshop back in order. Uh, if you saw in the first video, it's a complete disaster area right now. And you should get on to watching some more of the Burke Makes Stuff videos. There's a lot of awesome stuff up there for you to check out. And if you've come this far with us, you might as well subscribe. Subscription is free and it helps the channel immensely. I post every Wednesday at four o'clock-ish. If not, 
definitely every week, once a week. Thank you for coming on this journey with me. Thank you for being here with me. Take care, I'll see you next time.